Well, good morning. It is Sunday, March the 7th. Just a quick update on my nose. Um, I have gone from the big bandage down to the smaller Band-Aid. I have to put on a fresh Band-Aid up and uh, for another four or five days till Thursday, and then Thursday I take it off, and hopefully that will be the end of it. But uh, I appreciate uh, the thoughts and prayers on my behalf, but the doctor said it was healing beautifully, so hopefully everything will be back to normal uh, come this Thursday. I've mentioned before that motivation is a is a subject that fascinates me why people do what they do and again why I do what I do and most of you know that uh, I have run a marathon but I've been training for an ultra marathon at least a couple of times and had and I've had to stop uh, for some health reasons but anyway I found uh, some time ago a series of races called the four deserts ultra marathon races and there are four races, each of them in a desert, except for one uh, that's in Antarctica, which I wouldn't call a desert, but they call it the last desert. But anyway, each of these runs takes, you have up to six days to finish them, and they are each 155 miles in length. So that's a total of 620 miles, and you do it all in a calendar year. And on the website, they have a section called why and people have posted the reasons why they are doing this uh, one individual said i came home from iraq and my wife told me she had cancer and would die soon she was 32. i'm doing this as part of the grieving process can you imagine coming home from the battlefield and your wife telling you that she has cancer and she's going to die soon and she passed away when she was 32. Another individual, when uh, posted about why he was running these four desert ultramarathons, said, it's not for TV, it's not to write a book, it's not for my wife, or it's not for my kids. The reason I'm running this, the real truth, is it's me. It's me against me. Whatever it takes, I'm going to do it. I've always said, if I have to finish on my hands and knees screaming, then so be it, cause I ain't giving up. <laughs> and again, what a, what a visual, finishing the race on his hands and knees, screaming in agony and pain, but he's not going to give up. Why do we do what we do? whether it's where we work, what we do for recreation, why we serve God, why do we do what we do? Well, the Apostle Paul dealt with that in his letter to the saints in Philippi. And he did, if you will, a little bragging, even though he really didn't want to, but he did it to make a point. And so he says, We are the circumcision who worship by the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh. In other words, we don't have anything to brag about, though I myself have reason for confidence in the flesh. If anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, according to the law, of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. And so basically what the Apostle Paul is saying, if, if people want to boast about themselves and how good they are in their relationship with God, I have even more to brag about and to boast about. I am a persecutor of the church, and as it concerns righteousness according to the law, in other words, how, how I have kept the law, he said, I am blameless. Paul was on the way up the corporate ladder of Judaism, if you will, when God appeared to him on the road to Damascus. But what he says, whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. 
Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him. That I may know him may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. One thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who are mature think this way. Think about that. Our motivation for working may be so that we can get enough money in the bank so that we can retire at a fairly decent young age and take it easy. Our motivation for recreation may be just to take it easy. One of the reasons that I like handball, one of the things that motivates me to play handball is that there is no equipment. It's just you and your hands and the ball. You either get it back or you don't. There's no racket. There's no paddle. That's nothing. And I like it. It motivates me because it's difficult. But listen to what the Apostle Paul said. He was on his way up the corporate ladder of, Jerusalem, of Judaism. And he gave all of that up. And he counted it as rubbish for the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, his Lord. What are we giving up in order to know Christ? What's our motivation? What's, what's motivating us to do what we do? Because in the end, as we all know, but as we need to be reminded, especially myself from time to time, in the end, when I stand before the judgment seat of God, God's not going to care one bit how many handball tournament games I've won. He's not going to care one iota how many handball tournaments that I won, how many championships I have, how many marathons I've run, how many ultra marathons I've run. He's not going to care about any of that. He's going to care about what I was willing to give up in order to know Him and to spread His kingdom. That's what ought to motivate us. Well, I pray you'll have a great week.